So in our research field over the last couple of years, it has emerged that you can use brain scanners to decode what a person is thinking with more and more detail. So a couple of years ago, this uh, wouldn't have been thought possible. And now we can't just decode simple visual images, um, but we can also decode high-level thoughts, such as, for example, plans, action plans, memories, emotions, and things like that. And that's, I think, quite an exciting prospect. It sounds like you're talking about mind reading. Well, you could call it mind reading, although um, the um, reading might not be quite true, because that would imply that we actually understand the language of the brain. So what we're doing is we're kind of using brute force statistical techniques to kind of decipher um, what a person is thinking. Uh, but we can't actually read the meaning of each individual aspect of brain activity. So we don't understand the, the actual syntax and semantics of the uh, uh, neural activity. Can you show us how this works? Uh, I could, if I could see some slides, then I could. <laughs> so what, what you can see here on the left is uh, just uh, the mind reading of the 1900s. So in those days, people were very fascinated by the idea of uh, kind of stage tricks, stage magic. And what you can see here is a typical stage demonstration. Uh, a person comes out of the audience, comes up on the stage, and this person with their mind reading abilities is able to um, uh, draw a figure that this person is thinking of. And on the right, what you can see here is our current version. You can see a brain scanner. And this brain scanner now, we could possibly read out what this person is thinking of. Even though they might not tell us what they're thinking of, we might be able to still read out this information if we can decipher their brain activity properly. Well, how are our conscious thoughts encoded? Well, I'll show you just a brief example. One more, the next slide, please. So this is the brain scanner, just to inform you what a brain scanner is. It's ultimately a very strong magnet, like a coil magnet, just that it has a much stronger magnetic field than the Earth's magnetic field. And if we could show the next slide. So what you can see here on the left is the typical patterns of brain activity you get when people have different thoughts. Say, for example, thinking about a face, a house, and so on. And um, the meaning of your thoughts is encoded in these patterns of brain activity. And then what you have to do is you have to somehow analyze this. And for that, you can use something similar to what you know from CSI. Um, so if you just could show the next animation, we apply similar statistical techniques that we would normally use to decipher fingerprints. Um, and we train a pattern classifier to recognize these patterns of brain activity. And with that, we can then um, find these individual thoughts. It's very similar to the idea of actually using a fingerprint to recognize an individual. You have, to, you have a big database of fingerprints, and you've got names associated with them. And similar here, uh, we take the spatial patterns of brain activity, and we can identify specific um, uh, uh, thoughts that a person has, as long as they're in this database. So when you then, if you could just show the next one, um, you measure a pattern of brain activity, and you don't know what this person is thinking, then your pattern classifier just um, guesses that this is most likely going to be the one that is most similar, so statistically optimal techniques are used for this. And then you would, in this case, for example, guess that the person is thinking about, well, you could possibly guess it in the audience. Um, the, the person is thinking, does anyone have an idea? <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, if well, you could just, re if you could resolve it, <laughs> you'll see, yeah, you can see it was actually a chair. What about intentions, conscious thoughts? I mean, if we get beyond the issue of objects, how deeply can you probe using this kind of fMRI technology? Well, behind the stage, of course, we had a brain scanner installed that you didn't know of, so we were able to predict that you're <laughs> going to ask this question. And if you just press the next slide. So this is exactly a line of research we've been looking at. So in this case, a person was put in a scanner. It's just not shown in a scanner here for ease. Um, and they were asked to, at some point, that they could freely choose to press either a left or right button. So this is a very simple intention. It's not an intention like, am I going to go to New York or Washington? But it's an intention that is, kind of crystallizes this idea. You can use your free will at this point in time to decide either for left or right. And the question was, would we be able to read out this person's intention? And would we be able to read it out even before they themselves know how they're going to decide? And so that we could know when they made up their mind, we had a letter on a screen that changed every half second. So they had to remember, not they, see, when they make up their mind, they have to remember which letter was on the screen. And it just tells us, it's like a tag that tells us um, when they've made up their mind. And how does the letter on the screen figure into that? The letter figures in. So basically, it's very simple. You're, you're there, you're relaxing. And at some point, when you feel the urge to do so, you make a spontaneous decision for left or right. 
And um, uh, we just want to know when you made up your mind. So the letter doesn't really have any importance. It could just as well use a clock. And you just ask people, when did you make up your mind? Where was the clock when you made up your mind? And you say, say for example, at 10 o'clock. Uh, and then we know, OK, this is when they made up their mind. This is when they pressed the button. And then we want to go back in time from the point when they made up their mind and see how early we can predict how they're going to decide even before they themselves know how they're going to decide. And if you bring up the next um, point, you will see that um, this is a pattern of brain activity. So what you can see here, these are regions of the brain that are involved in very high-level mental activity, for example, planning your actions um, and reflecting about yourself. And below that, you can see like a geometric pattern of brain activity. And this geometric pattern of brain activity can tell us how someone is going to decide before they themselves even know what they're going to do. So we find that parts of the brain here, they have patterns of brain activity that emerge that predict your decision even before you, yourselves, you yourself know how you're going to decide. They give your decision away before you know.